scrimmage? Uh, it, it was exciting. Uh, you know, first off, we had all, all the families here, so we invited all the uh, you know players' parents and their families and loved ones here to watch practice, and we're gonna have a cookout up in Palmero afterwards. So I thought that was good. But from a pure scrimmage standpoint. <coughs> I think it was kind of a microcosm. I think it was representative of our camp as a whole. It, it was like a 15 round, you know, heavyweight bout. Uh, offense having its moments, defense having its moments. We wor worked on all the phases on special teams. Uh, we, we got a ton of work done. So I, I was, you know, very pleased. It's exactly where we needed to be is the precision there, no, but uh, another positive step in the uh, right direction. Is there any players or positions that have stood out in these first two scrimmages? Now, I think each, you know, each position has had its moments, but I think relative to either the outside or programs questions that needed to be answered. I, I've been very pleased with the development of the, of the wide receiver crew and um, very excited with our, our D-line, obviously. And, you know, we're going to be battle tested up front on the O-line, getting to go against these guys every day. Coach Baker does an unbelievable job, you know, play with a great motor, very physical run game, pass game. So, uh, you know, I think, you know, those are two areas that kind of stood out. Is there an area that maybe you're a little more pleased with than others and maybe some that you Need some improvement in? No, uh, we need improvement in everything. I, I don't think we're necessarily uh, where we need to be in, in any phase or in any position, but we're a heck of a lot closer now than we were in spring and heck of a lot closer with practice 12 than we were at practice one. So uh, the progression of uh, the installation and taking the information uh, from the meeting room to the field and the kids executing at a high level, uh, you know, this is in, as good as any first time installation, you know, offensively, defensively, and special teams that I've been around. So. You know, very optimistic, but I'm, I'm you know, glad we still have two more weeks to prepare. Was there any guys that weren't available to scrimmage tonight? I, I don't carry that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, yeah, there, there were guys that didn't practice, but I mean, it's practice 12. I mean, it's camps, bumps, and bruises. I mean, there's no one's out for an extended amount of time. So it's, uh, you know, guys are nicked up. We'll work to get them back this week. At what stage is the installation? How much? How many more days of that do you think you have? We're, we're done offensively and defensively uh, and special teams. You know, now as we uh, continue to creep closer, uh, Monday and Tuesday will be traditional camp days. Wednesday will be our final kind of dress rehearsal, thud scrimmage at the stadium, uh, doing two 15-minute uh, quarters, followed by a bunch of different special situations. So, you know, where we're at now is the fine-tuning of the installation and then kind of going through and, you know, any kind of, I don't say oddball, but, you know, centering the ball on offense, you know, for a field goal, you know, uh, last four on defense, and then all the things that go into special teams, onside, hands team, like that. So. You know, we're working to get all that stuff knocked out. At what point do you feel like you've set your depth chart for week one and, and kind of put guys on scout team and kind of begin the game plan for that ball game? Yeah, uh, after Wednesday's scrimmage, uh, we'll get together as a staff. We won't practice on Thursday and kind of make our determinations of who the initial uh, two deep and travel roster are going to be. And then uh, we'll start our first practice for Stephen F. Austin. It'll be on Friday. So we'll break into scout teams for Friday. That's sort of similar to the to the freshman who's going to red shirt who's going to play in four games. Yeah. You're starting to get an idea of that. Yeah, I, I think we have a you know a better grasp on it. I don't think it's necessarily set in stone, but you know, there, there's guys that have stood out, and I, I think the luxury of it is you have a little bit of leeway to uh, not make a mistake, but you, you you have some time, you know, that if you play them in the first one or play them in the second one. So there's guys who are definitely going to be red shirt and they need it. Uh, but like we talked about before, for, for a true freshman to get into a game, you know, it's not just going to be handed to them. They're going to have to earn the right. So the, the four is the number, but you know, they've got to earn the right to play in those four. What do you like about this linebackers group that you got? Coach Lukabu does a phenomenal job. You know, an All-American at Colgate. Uh, I had a chance to actually coach against him one time when I was at Georgetown. They beat us last, last second play, but that's <laughs> off the point. Uh, I, I think their football intelligence, I think they play with tremendous speed. Uh, very athletic, which you need in this league, and in, in the uh, kind of advent of spread offenses, the, the day of the true box linebacker, or uh, you know, kind of far and few between. So I think these guys are, you know, physical and aggressive enough to play downhill on a run in between the tackles, but also, you know, as people are trying to stretch you out and read you and do different things and put you in conflict, they can they can turn and run. But uh, you know, I'm you know, very pleased with our linebacker core. If, if Nick and Jerry had done the leadership job you expected of them when they were named team captains back in spring. Well, very much so to the extent that I think they're learning that leadership isn't kind of a blanket concept. They're finding out what buttons to push with each guy and, and how to kind of create an individual uh, you know, leadership profile for each guy, so to speak. But uh, to me, leadership 
is done by example first and then vocally second and certainly what they've done through the course of their time here as players and uh, since our staff's been here they've, they've earned the right to be vocal and also we've challenged like Mark McClure he's not a captain but I mean he's one of our best leaders on the team so it's not uh, specific or limited to the to the two guys with the C's on their chest but you know the the older players and the best players uh, you know we've seen a lot of good leadership out of them too Jeff, Jeffrey as well we hadn't talked to you since it happened, but taking the guys to Geyser Falls this past week, was it just a, a huge reward uh, for what the job that they've done so far? Yeah, it was It was a, right around the midpoint at camp. I think that was practice 10. And, uh, you know, I think of the practices we've had so far as a team, we've discussed it was really only one day where we feel we come out and probably stalemated if we didn't get better. So, uh, you know, there's just a time where you got to be smart, you know, with the legs and you got to, you know, reward hard work. So. You know, certainly it's – and another thing is, I mean, you're dealing with 17 to 22-year-old young men, so it, it kind of, as a coach, gives you a dose of perspective that, that you're so myopic and caught up in the day-to-day, -day, uh, you know, process and schedule of camp that you, you get them out there and get to see them act like kids for a while, which was neat because they, they had a lot of fun. How, how do you plan to handle the play call on game day between you and Coach Getsy? How, how will that be kind of be handled and communicated? Yeah, I call the plays. Uh, I'll get suggestions from those guys. So you know, Luke, we go we go through that. So in between series, will when most of the suggestions occur. So you know, Luke will kind of have an overall uh, grasp with both the pass and the run game, but his expertise lies in the pass game with Coach Browner. You know, Charles and uh, you know Marcus and Hud will work on um, you know protections and run game and things like that. So there's a system that when the series ends, you know, we get on the horn, talk about what we saw at the previous series, and kind of make our corrections and suggestions for the next series. One thing what I don't like is a bunch of noise when I'm trying to call. It's, it's almost impossible, so there's not going to be a bunch of different people talking when we're trying to get a play call. But they will have a significant amount of input. input. One thing fans always say, early in the season, defense is going to be ahead of the offense. As an offensive coach, do you believe that? Um, I, I guess maybe to a certain extent, but I, I think, you know, like I mentioned earlier, the sign, the, the, the very good teams that I've been around, it, it, it's been... Um, a great give and take throughout the course of camp. So certainly, you know, some people subscribe to that as your thought process. But what I want to see is, you know, every drill, every period, every day, every week, you know, those guys going back and forth. And, you know, we harp on, you know, explosive plays and turnover margin, and we chart those things and track them, and the kids are real competitive with that. So uh, I don't necessarily think that's the case because I think both sides of the ball and special teams are doing a good job.